um, our next speaker. Um, back during Pachacacha night number 40 at the Central Library, we called an audible, which is a sports term. Um, and we got 20 brave audience members to get on stage and speak for 20 seconds each uh, to create a full Pachacacha talk. And our next speaker was one of those brave souls. She spoke about setting her hand on fire for a living. Yeah, and she got a great reaction from it. But wildly, we actually have that in common because we've both worked at the same place. I'm not gonna tell you where this place is that asks their employees to set their limbs on fire. Maybe she will. She's an educator by trade, but forever a learner in life, an experienced, creative, non-formal educator and explorer of the natural world, and she is thrilled to share her thoughts about tonight's theme. She got 20 seconds back in 2020, but she gets 400 seconds tonight. Please welcome Amy Thompson. I'm not gonna lie, I completely forgot that I did that. Um, <laughs> pandemic was a whole lifetime ago. <laughs> All right, let's get it started. I fell in love with the idea of being an archeologist. I loved learning about the lives who once called various ancient and historic cities home, and even more so, the changes throughout time that still live on today. During my university years, working toward my undergrad in archeology, span I worked for three summers at the Clooney Fortified Village site, located on the Sigzika Nation and a few kilometers from where the pivotal Treaty 7 was signed. What you are seeing here are aerial photos of the site where fence posts and a ditch would have been enclosing a village. Amazing what a different perspective can reveal, isn't it? Over 60 years, Clooney would be excavated and as more of what was left behind was interpreted, narratives of the past in became into focus. The thing about archaeology is, more often than not, it is who, who is behind the interpretation and all of their lived experience, their knowledge, that determines the story that is or is not shared. During my summers at Clooney, I found my second career as I barely had entered my first, the world of informal education. I loved the opportunity to share the gift of knowledge found in the objects, patterns, and landforms revealed, and hoped that what, would, uh, what I was passing on would be gifted for years to come. What would take me longer to learn was that my lived experience and my intersectionality would determine how long that knowledge would carry and who would carry it. More importantly, as I began to recognize the depth of knowledge that was missing. While in my first year of my graduate program in 2019, my thoughts around the impact of knowing the life of an object couldn't be ignored. And while visiting an exhibition at the Glenbow around the sense of place through the eyes of indigenous artists, I was surprised to see the journal of Bull Plume, a Blackfoot elder. The journal had the key to understanding 146 years of Blackfoot history and stories captured through small images or pictographs drawn on the back of prepared bison hide. However, the key was not where it should have been. At Old Sun College, the winter count depicted through the journal lives on. What would have been once hidden, protected, and shielded from being destroyed is now displayed in a place of honor and openness. And made even more impactful, Old Sun College reclaimed its past as a residential school to become a place of cultural revitalization and strength. As you walk into the main hall of the campus, you are met with winter counts that have been created by the hands of children proud to tell their stories through the way that their ancestors would have. And this is where the importance of who is sharing and bringing life back into our collective tapestry of the past matters. While working at Clooney, a group of colleagues and I had the opportunity to develop the Indigenous Youth Engagement Program. The program partnered with the University of Calgary, the Siksika Nation, and the Siksika High School. And we trained youth in archeological techniques, giving students the opportunity to excavate their own history and maybe one day provide a sharper image created not through hearsay, but through the lived experience of their relatives. While more and more reconciliatory archeology span occurs as the field grows, a large part of the problem with history sharing remains. As we develop a greater understanding of equity work as a human race, museums and cultural spaces have been forced to reflect on their own roles in how history has been portrayed. 
the objects and stories that have been taken without permission and the damage that has been done to the people and the cultures left behind, and how damaging the lack of a rounded narrative has been to present day ideologies. To truly develop a sense of place, where we call home, we have to learn how to tell the stories of today through the lives of the past, deciding on how we will weave them into our own identities. Edu Aptimuk, or Two-Eyed Seeing, is the gift of multiple perspectives and was first taught to me by Mi'kmaq Elder Albert Marshall. Through this concept, one knowledge system is not held above the other, and both can be used to understand the present reality. The approach of analyzing anything with multiple perspectives allows for the most comprehensive and holistic form of storytelling. This also means taking off the Instagram filters of interpretation and leaning into the discomfort just as much as the moments of celebration. When you use the full breadth of history to understand the present, the landscape starts to shift and you begin to see what you had so clearly missed. And if the discovery of the Rosetta Stone has taught us anything, it's that one piece of knowledge can be the key to reconnection. My experience with archeology span taught me one very important lesson. The only constant across history is change. And I was lucky enough to make some changes through my last project while working at the Science Center. Community and relationship building before all else is what I was taught by Elder Betty Latondra. If you're not pulling up a chair for who's missing at the table, then you are not acknowledging all of the stories that people have yet to tell. It's why I spent time with elders, community members, and guests to learn about their lives, seek advice, and use all of their tools at our disposal to create a more inclusive gallery for them and their needs, as well as their children's. And after hours of conversations and planning, the themes of relationships with the land and caregivers became the priority. A few months later, an infant area that married the Western science of brain development and the importance of strong relationships from early on was born. Here, you will find the design inspired by water, but given life through the connections made by those spending time in this space. When building a sense of place, you have to give others who aren't present the ability to take up the space and feel at home, even though they have never needed the permission to do so. And it was when working with my co-authors on our recently released book that I had an epiphany relevant to today's topic. It was never the artifacts alone that made archeological sites significant. Without the people who used them and lived on through the minds of their, of their relatives, none of this would matter. It is only through the living cities of the past that we are able to see our homes thrive today. In the Central Library, there is a sculpture called Education is the New Buffalo. Much like how every part of the bison was and continues to, to be used to live a good life and to survive, we must do the same as a city. To create and fully embrace what we know the city can become, we must use every tool at our disposal, every story, every tale, and meet at every intersection. Thank you. Thank you, Amy.